Welcome to all the participants, wherever you are. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night. And it's a pleasure for us to go through the lie of this uh, webinar series number one. Remember that those who want to participate in the other webinars, make sure that uh, you fix your time and uh, you will also receive the link for webinar two sometime next week. So let's start uh, today's lecture. Uh, I will give the first lecture as introduction to process de design analysis stage, actually not process design analysis stage, but process innovation stage, correct it afterwards. <clears throat> so, in this process uh, in a stage, uh, I will first give a brief introduction to the process innovation stage. Then I will talk about uh, computer-aided process intensification, a longer lecture, and then a shorter lecture for other ways to give innovation, not just process intensification. Then instead of the problem solution being the last, uh, we will have the problem solution today. Um, and uh, in the problem solution, there will be shown different ways to saw, get innovative solutions and verify them, both with a, a commercial simulator like Pro2 and Pro CFD and some Excel based programs. And then the last lecture will be from uh, Texas AM, Professor Stratos Pistikopoulos, director of the Energy Institute at Texas A&M and professor at Chemical Engineering Department. He, uh, his view of synthesis of operable process intensification systems, which uh, he calls synopsis. Okay, so with that uh, as the program, let me just briefly give an overview of a systems approach related to process systems engineering we are employing. We are employing a multi-stage multi method for systematic simulation design analysis, uh, where we highlight systematic simulation design analysis in this workshop. Uh, the whole uh, sustainable synthesis uh, design analysis innovation is decomposed in three stages and within those three stages tasks the tasks are similar to steps in the workflow the tasks are arranged in a specific sense within each task a set of decisions are made to avoid trial and error so method calculations are made to verify the decisions data generated in one is used in the subsequent tasks so manual uh, of data and manual going from one tool to another, all those things are avoided through a efficient integration of the tools. There are of course many ways to solve sustainable process design problem. What we are showing is just one way of doing it. And so in our uh, three stages sustainable design methodology, as you all know now, we are in the third stage, the synthesis uh, can be bypassed if we already have a flow sheet. The design stage can be bypassed if we already have a flow sheet and a corresponding design to it. But now what we have to do is looking at the flow sheet and design, considering it as a base case or reference, we will analyze it. We will try to find opportunities for improvement. We will set targets for improvement. Then in the innovation stage, we will try to find out how many of those targets for improvement can be uh, achieved. And all those targets that can be achieved for improvement mean that we have a more sustainable alternative than the original. Remember that like enthalpy, sustainability is a, not an absolute value 
with a reference. So that's why we need a base case and compared to the base case, we always say by how much it is better. So we have done up to now task nine and after task nine, we have identified the hotspots and we have identified the targets for improvement and set some goals for the targets. So the next three tasks, 10, 11, 12, are how to achieve those targets. And those alternatives that those targets are by definition more sustainable. So task 10, that integration of heat and mass opportunities. If there are opportunities for mass uh, integration, we can do that. And any integration like this, we will see and probably know very well because uh, heat uh, integration, mass integration is a well-developed uh, technique. It saves a lot of the heat. Um, so the first step therefore is to see how by how we can save the utilities. Then the next task 11 is including the heat and mass uh, integration. We want to put an optimization and the optimization again, is going to be formulated such that the targets that have been defined can be matched. And here you will see also examples of not only do the optimization, we do the heat integration, but there are ways to do this simultaneously also. The most common way of doing this is sequential. We do the heat integration, the network, and then we do the optimization. But the optimization with the heat integration may change the process conditions, the process demands, which would mean that the heat integration needs to be done again. So if we do sequential we get a result, but if we do simultaneous, it is possible to get better results and you will see that. And then the final task is how to generate alternatives besides optimization and heat and mass uh, integration. So there we will look at process intensification and hybrid schemes. So the methods uh, for task 10 is the uh, standard methods heat and mass integration. Then for task 11, process optimization and sequential and simultaneous together with heat and mass integration. And then task 12, are new methods that are developed, phenomena-based process integration, intensification, sorry, hybrid rules for generating hybrid, hybrid schemes and when they can be applied, new designs, all of those. What about the tools? We have already for task nine, we need a number of externals that can be in-house, that can be from outside. We need to integrate them. And then for task 10, usually the process simulators already have the heat and mass integration, especially the heat integration, mass integration, I'm not sure that they all of them have, but heat integration also have it. We have developed our version of heat integration in ProCFD. This will be demonstrated today. Then optimization here. Our first attempt is to use the simulator that I used for simulation, because if we have done a rigorous simulation, let's say with Pro 2, then obviously if we want to do any optimization, it is easier to set up the problem Pro 2. If we did it in Aspen, then we would do the optimization also in Aspen or any other simulator. And finally, Phenomena-based and hybrid-based, there are no algorithms that are implemented in any of the commercial simulators. Uh, we have our algorithm, we have a prototype. I will show you the prototypes and I will show you also discuss how we read them, the steps uh, to generate new alternatives and how they can be verified through well-known simulator, through well-known models in the simulator. So if we go back to initial, uh, as we said that uh, 
sustainable design that we have a reference and based on the reference can we find better alternatives it is very important to establish what is the reference this reference should be very good not uh, any reference but a very good reference and then we want to improve it further so we do the spider plots where we we show what is the reference with the green boundary and then we want to generate alternatives that are within the boundary so the objective is improvements compared to the reference must be significant for example 20 percent at least uh, reduction in energy consumed this is uh, what is suggested by the rapid institute of aig who are championing the uh, use of process intensification so if there is an alternative process intensification it needs to reduce the energy consumption by least 20 percent there are other also issues material uh, uh, reduction of material used reduction of uh, carbon food many others but this is a, con uh, a valid number 20 percent be possible to reduce i would add to this also reduction in net co2 emission we define the boundary and whatever then goes out because of the process we have because of the power plant and so on then co2 can we bring it to zero or negative because if we can then we are actually getting our product and at the same time we are reducing the carbon so I would add also reduction of net CO2 emission the criteria that we want to check. So these are the objectives of why we would do find innovative solutions. What kind of innovative solutions can there be? These are just examples. Uh, we could find new catalysts to do the reaction better so that there is less and the conditions are better. For example, the fischer tropsch reaction, of very high temperature and pressure, and that is the reaction used for um, this gas from which many chemicals are obtained. Can we find cats to do at lower temperature pressure? So the energy demand will be low. Membranes, they do not require too much energy for the separation, similarly absorbance, can we use membranes absorbance for separation? And there are many more. Another one is uh, new equipment operations. Through intensification, can we find a totally new unit operation that does not exist now? Through integration, can we find different integration schemes <clears throat> that, have, uh, that are guaranteed to give uh, the objectives that we want? Hybrid operation. Can we combine distillation with membrane with the uh, result that uh, we need much lower energy and also increased efficiency? Can we have better mixing, better heat transfer, better mass transfer, and so on? Because increased efficiency will decrease the energy demand. And so, do that and there are many other ways as you will see in my next lecture uh, where we will talk the different ways of achieving intensification so there are many ways to do in this uh, webinar we are highlighting only of them intensification integration hybrid operation and i will also give you a little bit of background of process systems engineering, a multi-layered view, because it also set the scene of why we are doing it, things like that. So remember that uh, in chemical or biochemical or pharmaceutical or food, in all these engineering domains, what we do is we take some resources and connect them through a process to the product we want. With respect to process system engineering, the fundamental core topics that we need to convert resources to products is modeling, synthesis, design, control, methods, and so on. 
And if we know all of this, we should be able to design a process. We should be able to model a process for simulation. We should be able to operate, analyze, and so on. So these are the fundamental topics of only process systems engineering, but all other engineering domains. Is that enough? Do we have the best product? Do we have the minimum waste? The process operating at the best conditions. So the fundamental is not enough. We need additional layer and the additional layer, the integration of engineering and science with uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning, model predictive control, process intensification, and so on. We are still putting the resources to products, but now we can say that we have improved product, we have less weight and so on. So the intermediate layer has to achieve sustainability in some sense, efficiency, reliable technologies and so on. But is that enough? I would say it is not enough. We need a final layer and the final layer will help us to convert the resources, not just any resources. We can look at the location, we can look at the type, we can look at the demand, availability, recovery. taking all this into account, we can then develop the optimal products, the lowest controlled environmental impact and so on. To do this, we need concept-centric ideas, disciplines, data sources, integration, all of that. This can come from not just one discipline, many disciplines, but the final result that we can um, try to achieve uh, circular economy, sustainable development of society. That is our ultimate goal. So whatever we do, we have contribute towards achieving circular economy and sustainable development goals for the society. So with this background, you can see that uh, if we want to achieve uh, the innovation, we need to be able to do things at the middle layer and at the outer layer. The fundamental is not enough. And then we can go back and see that, okay, if you want to have a process uh, design and uh, simulation of this process, uh, how do we design this so that we can simulate? Can we solve this problem? Can we optimize and control? Can we do process integration? Can we analyze? And based on this, can we improve? Yes, we can do that already today, but uh, as we discussed in the last two lectures uh, and the webinars, that we can do this with trial and error. And if we stick to the unit operation level, there's a limit to the no amount of improvements we achieve. It's small improvements and it may not be enough efficient for our minimum target of 20% reduction. There are problems of whether we can achieve the 20% minimum reduction as well as can we do this instead of uh, following a iterative procedure. So we can see then with respect to the commercial or current state of the art of the simulator, what do they have? They have database, library, they have flow sheet representing system, model library, solver library, and they have to select solver for problem solution, retrieve the needed models, specify the flow sheet, estimate the needed properties, retrieve the data, and so on. So with this, as we talked about, we can solve the problem in a trial and error manner. However, <clears throat> if new compounds, new solvents, does the simulator generate them? If we need new models, does the simulator generate the new models? If we need a flow sheet, does the simulator find that flow sheet for us or design the process for flow sheet? Also, if we need hybrid units or intensified units, do they have the models for that? So we can see that if we want to do any of these, <clears throat> which is related to the innovation stage, the simulator is able to do. 
So what we have to do is to find a solution and then use the simulator in uh, indirect way to verify our alternative. And this is what we will see further as we go on to this uh, webinar. So pro-CFD that you have already seen attempts to achieve some of these things, not perfectly. It still needs much more development, but at least it has the structure. So what you can see that we need a lot of data, not just data of chemicals. Uh, we also need reaction. We also need process groups data, uh, solvents data, and so on. We have a library of databases and it's continuously increasing. Then we have a library of models at different scales because uh, uh, that you saw already when we want to calculate energy index or footprint without doing a simulation, that's a different kind of model. And then the simple mass balance, energy balance, that's a different kind of model. Process safety, that's a different kind of model. So we need different kinds of models with, uh, and also we discussed yesterday that models could be steady state or dynamic depending on the application. So we need to have a collection of models. Because the simulators do not do the synthesis problem, do not do the design problem, do not do the intensification problem directly. It is indirectly by trial and error. Can we put in methods for synthesis design intensification? So we don't need to do the trial and error. So that also needs a collection of methods. And then once we have done the design synthesis intensification, flow sheet, all these things, we can always go to a simulator at the scale that we want to verify. Because if we do the design at a smaller scale, not at the unit level, then we cannot use the simulator. So the simulator has to be used at the scale that the models are available, which is at the unit operation level. So that is also limitation of what the simulator can do. And then finally, the analysis tools, we have seen that we need a lot of different analysis and we need to have tools and methods for those analysis. And then of course, you can see that uh, the simulator is just one of many tools that we need. And I'm not showing the visualization, but visualization is also important and we need to have tools for that. So that's the architecture of ProCFD and the concept of getting an integrated system of tools, methods within a framework through which we can solve these problems. Also, we need to understand that if we are looking at most of the products and processes that have been developed, most of them have been developed through experiment, experimental trial and error experimental studies. So above the dashed line, it is reality. We study them, that is do experiments. Based on the experiments, if we find a system that we like, we say this is our solution. But is that the best solution? We can never be sure. The only thing we are sure is because we have done the experiment, it will give what we want. On the other hand, if we use a virtual reality, that means model the system, the model, and then do virtual experiments rather than real experiments, it is trial and error. That is what we are doing with the simulator these days, trial and error, get a solution. If the model matches the system, real system, we can say this is the this is a result that can be uh, that can be uh, accurate and will match the experiments. But is that the best solution? It is not the best solution because the model uh, can only represent the system and not beyond the system. So it cannot do the predictive technique, uh, predictive predictions. Uh, of vision, but it can reduce the time. So if we integrate the reality and virtual reality in a way, 
we could reduce the time for development, we could very quickly generate solutions, and then the most promising solutions, we can do experiments to verify. But we don't do not the really innovative predictive solutions. To get that, the model to be predictive, it should be able to predict outside the box. And if it is a predict outside the box, then we can get truly innovative solutions, which means that model need to be multi-scale, not just unit operation, uh, smaller and better, so that we can generate solutions that the unit operation level cannot. And then we can get truly innovative new solutions. So now coming back to the to what we have up to now and using the HDA process as an example, we have generated this flow sheet from zero, knowing only the input and the output and the reaction. We got a flow sheet, which is not exactly this one that has been shown to you. And then through analysis, we found out that there's an opportunity for heat integration and there are hot spots in these areas that need to be addressed. And if all these are addressed, by definition, we will have a better solution. So how can we achieve, especially the red hot spots? Obvious is reduce the flow rate. How can we reduce the flow rate of the recycle? Because you will see that uh, all of these uh, red, hotspots are within recycle loops. So how can we reduce the recycle loop? One way is to increase the conversion in the, cat, uh, in the reactor, but usually the catalyst is fixing the conversion and the temperature pressure. So it may not be possible unless we find a new reactor, uh, a new catalyst. So we can play with uh, how much is purged, more efficiency in heat transfer, mass transfer, and so on. And these are some solutions that you will see. So the topics for today, uh, integration with respect to energy to solve the problem. And uh, you will see the problem solution and demonstration. Uh, these are to, matching the, uh, to match the target, integration of network. So can we, make a network of the process, the energy, the water, and so on in a network. So we are not reducing the size, we are increasing the size. So that is also possible. You will see presentation of concepts in my lectures, then integration and optimization, solving the problem and doing the optimization that we integrate and further improve by optimization to handle the hotspots. Then hybrid schemes, presentation of concepts and problem solution, I will show you. And process intensification, presentation of concepts and problem solution. And process intensification, there will be two lectures, my lecture and Professor Pistikopoulos from Texas a and <clears throat> So summary, and this is the overall summary of the, of the sustainable process design. Sustainable process design, including synthesis design analysis in innovation in 12 sequential tasks steps, guarantees improved design compared to the base case, finds non-trade-off solution if available, establishes first a very good feasible design, that's the virtual reality, base case or reference, analyzes the base case to identify opportunities for improvement and defines the target for improvement, then applies available opportunities to generate more sustainable solution. These are the innovatives. We go to multi-scale so that we can find other solutions that otherwise cannot be found. We have also given you introduction to ProCFD as a software tool and associated tools connected to that <clears throat> and how different problems can be formulated. Solution is highlighted through a set of integrated software tools. And then 
the last slide in this is the list of references that you can look at. So I will not take questions now. We can take the questions uh, after my next lecture. Unless you have some urgent questions you want to ask while I change from one presentation to another. So if you have a question now, just put it on chat and one of the hosts will read it for you. And I will move to the next.